So when you came in the league, it was always I. Everybody thought it was Schroeder, and then we were told yeah. it was Schroeder. Mm, Schroeder. There's a little. Yeah, it's just yeah. when you say it. When you say it, it sounds yeah. right. If I say it, it sounds funny. Mm -hmm. But if I say Schroeder, is that? I'm good with that. You're good with that. I'm good right. with that. Yeah. That was a big. When you first got here, that was like, hey, uh, I want to let you know it's Schroeder. And right. I'm like, wait a minute, we've been saying it for. 12 years or whatever the other way people say schroeder and it got to a point where my mom came to me and she was like why are they always saying it wrong and then i was like okay i gotta say something so schroeder it is now. it's always the mom yes <laughs> it and is you have the umlaut on yes, your name umlaut, yes. too right yep and uh we said we were the first net with an umlaut really yes never been an umlaut before that's special I remember where years ago when I first started, uh, we had a guy named Todd McCullough. He was a big man. He played for the Sixers and then he played for the Nets on the the, the finals team in 02. Uh -huh. um, but I was doing this kind of thing where I gave you the reads to do, where you know you read for radio and he yeah. all of a sudden, you know, he'd been in the league a while. We were saying McCullough. And then when he went to say his name, he said McCulloch. Mm. And we all went, wait a minute, wait, you're, <laughs> what do you, how do you say your name? He goes, well, the men in my family say McCulloch, the women say McCullough. Yeah. And I went to Iron Eagle and he goes, we, have to, we can't change it now. Everybody's right. going to think right. we're wrong. Right. right, So, But we go to dinner in the finals and his dad is with us. We're a small group of people. We go out to dinner and his dad is there in LA. And Iron Eagle is there with me and a couple other people. And his dad goes from across the room and he goes, hey, Ian. You're saying our name wrong. Uh. It's McCulloch. <laughs> so okay. Um, let me ask you. So you mentioned your your mom would would question whether people were saying your name right, mm -hmm. whoever. But I remember when you first came in the league, you had that little blonde spot in your yeah. hair. Yeah. And we always thought it was a birthmark, and then I read that it was your mom. Mm -hmm. Tell me the story behind that. I was like 14, 15, um, got into basketball. Um, people in my hometown kind of um, knew that I'm, you know, taking it seriously in basketball. And um, my mom was like, oh, it's a, it's a good time now to dye your whole hair blonde. <laughs> I came from school and went to her shop. And then I was like, what are you talking about? Usually <laughs> the kid is the one who wants to do that. And yeah. the mom's like, no. And then uh, I was like, oh, the whole hair, I don't know. And she was like, okay, just do a golden patch. Okay. And then I was like, okay, I'm good with that. And then I started it and from there on I didn't I didn't um I mean I had it for the longest. But then one summer, um you're not getting younger, you know, so I lost a lot of hair because of that. <laughs> but um I had to like um take time off from bleaching it. And we played the World Cup and we won the World Cup. And now you can't mess with it. Yes, it's, it's tough for me now to switch back to Golden Patch. Um, but uh, when you're young, you do stuff, you know. Um, same as uh, Kobe Bryant from 8 to 24. Uh, rest in peace to Kobe. But um, I think it's a, it's a switch now. You know, I got three wonderful kids, uh, my wife. And um, I'm, you know, uh, a team owner um, back home. And I'm doing a lot of business, so now I gotta have to. In the uh, in the Bundesliga, you have a team. Yes, they playing at two p.m. too. So <laughs> I wanted to be there, but I couldn't because we got media day. Uh, <laughs> Which team is that? Uh, Braun Braunschweig Basketball Löwen. Uh, so I used to play for them before I got um, to the league. Tell me about that because you you tell me your origin story, mm -hmm. right? Well, how did how did basketball become part of your life? Uh, great question because I mean it, it used to be skateboard. No, he was just giving me a signal how much uh, okay, time. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we um, used to ride skateboards every single day, you know, and um, we had a skate park, and right next to it we had a basketball court. And I played a little basketball when I didn't try to, you know, uh, when I had enough of skating. Um, went to the basketball court, shot a little bit, and um, did the first summer, then the second summer, I did it again. And then one of my coaches, Livio Kalin, um, found me and was like, you should play basketball. And I never took it really seriously. I was like, okay, I got you. And um, then the next time I seen him was right under the, the parking garage under a gym. And he took me right with uh, with him and uh, said, yo, you're going to come to basketball. And 
that's how it started. And uh, yeah, now I'm here. And he changed your life. He changed my life. That's the reason why I bought the club as well, because they wanted to fire him. Really? Um, oh, see, he's the coach. He, yeah, he's so, assistant coach. Just he just turned 71 um, last week. And um, he do a lot of individual stuff. That's where he's best at. And um, yeah, bought the team, made sure he gets um, what he deserves. Wow. And um, yeah. Now, you, he was he a father figure in life? I know you yes. lost your dad when you were young, right? Yeah, he, he, he was there. Uh, he was the only one who really... Um, made sure that uh or he he how can i say it? he really respected me mm. he knew that i wanted to get better and that i'm a good person and there wasn't a lot of people out there who uh believed the same thing so um really honored um to have him um without him i wouldn't i wouldn't be here and uh That's having great. these talks so um yeah we appreciate him least you could do was buy a team and make sure he had a job at least <laughs> <laughs> that's great at that's least. a great story um and and it, wow wow what an impact one person can have on somebody's mm -hmm. life and now you've had an impact on so many other people mm -hmm. uh teammates not to mention your national team mm -hmm. i mean you mentioned you know going and winning the world cup uh you, you guys have become a a, na a a force on the international stage right mm -hmm. now uh full circle yeah. for you as an individual uh yes it's uh 10 years i played there um had really five to six rough years uh with the national team but we never quit it you know we we always um stayed together and um yeah i mean winning the world cup uh was i think the biggest thing what um germany has seen you know and um Everybody who was in that locker room, even the federation, um, even the coaching staff, um, everybody, you know, is um, really honored uh, to be in that spot. Do you feel your influence on the young German players that are coming up now, maybe young players that uh, might pick up a basketball in Germany? I mean, I know Dirk Nowitzki is a guy who had a, yes. a lot of influence in Germany. Probably I mean, can't overstate that. Yeah, right? Jerry Dirk is uh, one of the best four men who ever played the game. So he changed um, basketball for the four men, uh, having a shot, you know, stretching yeah. the floor. So he is uh, the GOAT um, in basketball in general, internationally, um, in the NBA, and winning the NBA champion, being the MVP. Um, having over 30,000 points uh, speaks for itself. But yeah. um, I mean, I'm, I'm, me personally, I just try to uh, be the best, you know, human being, being the best um, teammate, you know, best dad and all the, all the other stuff. And um, I have my own legacy, you know, and um, I try to help basketball in Germany grow in the last 10 years what I've seen um, uh, what we did so far is, uh, has been great um, Germany is on the map and uh, we have a lot of young guys uh, who are coming up um, and a lot of people in my city um, who are playing basketball now because they want to become the next you know Franz Wagner Isaac Bonga and um, all the other guys in the locker room yeah. so um, it's, it's, it's great to um, be such a like a role model, you know, for for uh, a whole country and even for other countries as well. So, yeah, you uh, you've you've now grown too to where you're an NBA veteran and you've got a family, like you mentioned. I know last year the trade happened; mm -hmm. they were still up in Toronto. Yep, coming right? back and forth. Kind so of, now are they yep. are they going to be here? Yep, they great. came yesterday uh, at two p.m um everybody's together now and uh we try to get the house situation going right now uh everything um did furniture. they spend time did you did they you know did your wife come you took yeah. cars where to live yep, and things yep, like yep. that i so. mean we didn't uh we seen it over facetime uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> to be honest uh we didn't fly over um but i mean now we we settling in um slowly but surely and um yeah we're looking forward you know to see brooklyn and um all the restaurants all the indoor playgrounds for the kids and um yeah we we ready well uh as 
I, I get to make a snarky comment about, well, you've got a lot of young kids on this team too, yeah. Uh, yeah. but you do when you're one of the veterans. Yeah. So when you, what's your approach? I mean, you, you want to win games and you want to play well. Of and course. You shot the ball really well when you came, and, yeah. um, but you're also going to be looked on to kind of be a mentor and that might be as important a role with this team as, as anything else you're going to do. Yeah. I mean, I just, um, like I said, I want to be the best human being I can be every single day and uh, I'm a, I have great veterans. I had great veterans um, back in the day and I want to be the same with uh, all these young guys um, in the locker room. Of course, win games, but we can't win games if we're not connected and we're not a team and um, that's what we try to bring here. Um, Jordy as well, um, mm -hmm. I like what he did so far. And um, I think everybody, you know, is listening, willing to listen. And, um, yeah, we just try to, you know, make it a great environment. Having fun, that's the most important. Because, I mean, we're playing in the best league uh, in the world. So we can't take it for granted. We got to be grateful. And, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be great. One last thing. I want to ask you about a couple of important young players. Yeah. Your first game last year, I think it was your first game with the Nets, uh, you threw this lob from out of bounds to Nick Claxton who yeah. dunked it, right? Yeah. Um, he's he gets a big contract. He's going to yeah. be, you know, stepping it up this yeah. year. Uh, his you you play with guys like Clint Capella, Rollman. Like, where do you see Nick as far as the next level for him? Nick is um, the defensive anchor of this team. Uh, when he has a defensive presence and he is locked in on the defensive end. It's so, so uh, tough to score against us. Um, I want him or challenging him being uh, for 82 games, to do the 82 games. It don't matter if we lose games, win games, but I want him to stay positive and do what he, what he can control. Um, and I think when everybody just do what um, they can control, we're going to be uh, in a good spot. And... Um, I mean, Nick is, uh, even on the offensive end, so important for us uh, with the lob threats, um, rebounding. You know, he does so many things. And, uh, of course, his contract is uh, earned. Um, he, he, he did great things in this league, and he's going to be even uh, greater moving forward. Cam Thomas, mm -hmm. where do you see him as far as where he can grow? Being uh, when I first got traded, I heard a lot of things about him and uh, seen, of course, a lot of things about him in social media. And um, he's such a great kid, though. Like, he is, yeah, I, I, I uh, talked with him, I challenged him right away. I was like, Listen, I'm here to just help you, you know, I'm uh, I don't have no egos, you know, I just try to um, be the best team possible and um, helped him. And he adopted in that role really quickly, uh, making the right decisions, uh, finding Nick Claxton on laps, you know, uh, when they stepped up. And uh, really looking forward for him to take the next step in every single uh, category, uh, scoring, passing, being a great leader. And um, if he does that, then he's going to be, you know, a real problem uh, in this league. Um, he's already, but uh, <laughs> he's, he's going to be a real problem in this league. So different impression from the outside than when you got inside of him. Of him, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, now seeing him now, uh, every single day, how hard he works and what he does, um, you appreciate, you always got to get to know a person first, yeah. you know, what he is about and what he's doing and, I uh, really respect what he's uh, bringing to the table. Well, Dennis, respect your career uh, and what you've done uh, off the court, on the court. Mm. Congratulations on that. Good luck this Thank season. You. We I look forward it. to seeing you Thank out you. there. Thank you.